oysters are about the story. And I said, we just want to be storytellers. Like, that's all we want to be, right? So, um, you know, we want to make people happy with our oysters, for sure. The Mall Pickle Oyster has an excellent name, great name, and it always will. The taste is the main thing, and eh? the solidity, it's a, it, it's a beautiful thing, eh? We're going to be doing oysters until we're 75 years old, I know it. And, uh, there's no better way to spend your life, I don't think. Yeah. Talking, eating, shucking oysters is, is the best thing you can do. That's the best office a fellow could hope yeah, for. Yeah, that's right. Hello, I'm Tom Murphy. Welcome to Land and Sea. This mighty mollusk packs a powerful economic punch. And driven by the worldwide popularity for it, Prince Edward Island's oyster industry has exploded. With over half of the oysters consumed in North America coming from Canada's smallest province, islanders are making sure this booming business continues to thrive. There's a mystique about oysters, a folklore that surrounds and draws people to them. Shuckers, are you ready? Timers, are you ready? Ready! Audience, are you ready? <laughs> so we're gonna go now in three, two, one, shot! <laughs> oh. Discovering this folklore and appreciating the local stories behind oysters is one reason why oyster festivals are on the rise. Hello and welcome. Have you all been to Oyster Fest? Oh, yeah. Oh, well Every then. Every single year. Welcome back. I'm glad you keep coming. Been to Oyster Fest before? This is our third year. Oh, perfect. So you can give me the drill. Oysters under the tent, food and drink tickets here, Excellent. things to purchase around the periphery, including the merchandise in this tent. 57,000 oysters are served at the Halifax Oyster Festival. It's not just sampling oysters that draws people to festivals. It's the experience of coming face to face with maritime oyster growers that's appreciated. From Prince Edward Island, Jeff Noy doesn't miss a chance to bring his product to an oyster festival. It's really important to go to these kind of things, especially this festival. Um, and and it, it's getting your, your oyster out in front of somebody. It's showing your brand, but also it's about telling your story. For Prince Edward Island's oyster growers, the increase in the popularity of oysters has breathed life into the island's shellfish industry. Surrounded by water, Prince Edward Island has no shortage of seafood to offer. Its shallow, cold, nutrient-rich waters make it a perfect place for shellfish to flourish. We have a very high salt content in our water, it definitely adds to it. Um, but yeah, the temperature, uh, the salt level, and you know, just PEI was, was put here to grow oysters. That's, what, that's why Prince Edward Island was made, if it was ever made. Yeah. It was here to <laughs> grow beautiful, beautiful oysters. And you know, we're just lucky to be, to be uh, here to, to witness that. <laughs> Jeff Noy and Damien Enman were childhood friends growing up just down the road from one another in Tyne Valley, Prince Edward Island. We both love oysters. You yeah. know. I, I, we both grew up around it. You're always at the shore picking. Our parents probably taught us to eat them before we <laughs> ate anything else. <laughs> No, yeah, so like, and like your, your parents, uh, that's what they did. My father's been fishing ever since I was a little kid. Yeah, we'll go a little further and let it drift in. Anger. We can trade spots. This year, seeing the growth and the popularity of oysters, the two followed their childhood dreams and started their own oyster business, Valley Pearl Oysters. These are, uh, these are the beauties that grow naturally on the bottom of Malpec Bay. Close to their homes in Tyne Valley, the new entrepreneurs grow bottom cultured oysters in their 10 acre lease in Malpec Bay. An oyster lease is equivalent to real estate, except it's located on water. For oyster growers, their GPS indicates precisely where their lease is and where they can grow their seafood. This is your ground, so you can continually put seed on it and make sure that there's always going to be oysters. You can kind of really look after this little piece of the ground. They seed oysters by putting oyster larvae, or spat, on the saltwater floor. 
Oysters grow about an inch a year, and while oysters are adults at three years of age, bottom-cultured oysters are usually not harvested until they are five to seven years old. You can kind of tell the age of it by the size, but also these rings that are around it, every, every you know, growth season that they have, they'll have this little growth that comes up. The oysters are harvested using wooden tongs, following the traditional method PEI fishermen have used to harvest oysters for many centuries gone by. So I'm just uh, measuring now to make sure that they're three inches. Three, three inches to three and a half inches is kind of the small choice. Uh, anything under that, I don't think it's ready to be consumed. So we throw that back and we let them live another day and we'll fish them later on. He'll get bigger and he'll be on somebody's plate. Oh, like, look at that. It doesn't get any better than that. Like, that's beautiful, eh? Like, gorgeous. That fellow there's got to be seven, eight, nine, ten years old. Like, he's a, that's a gorgeous oyster right there. Oh, look at the meat in it, eh? Nice and plump. How are they? Salty? Oh, that's delicious. You're not going to get any fresher than that, eh? Oh my god, it's like a... It's a whole steak. People around the world have been enjoying shellfish from PEI for centuries. At the Paris World Fair in 1900, the Malpec oyster from Canada's smallest province was crowned the world's best oyster. Then disaster struck. In 1915, a disease decimated 90% of PEI's oyster population. Fortunately, the oysters in Malpec Bay withstood the disease. Malpec larvae was gathered and spread throughout the island, and the oysters managed to survive. A century later, every oyster in PEI is a direct descendant of Malpec Bay and are called Malpec oysters. If you're an oyster fan, and if, you're, if you love oysters, you know Malpec oysters are the, are the best in the world. Oysters are mighty mollusks. As filter feeders, just one oyster can filter 60 liters of water a day. This filtering system helps keep water free of toxins. Known as bivalves, their bodies are protected by shells that are attached with a hinge or ligament. One trait of the Malpec oyster is their hinge is exceptionally strong. While there is one species of oyster in PEI, the Malpec, about three dozen varieties are being cultivated in PEI today. Their taste varies depending on where in the province they are grown. In East Bitterford, Prince County, PEI fisherman Gordon Hardy and his team are checking on their top cultured oysters. Hardy comes from a long line of fishermen. His father owns and operates Leslie Hardy and Sons, one of the largest international shippers of shellfish in Prince Edward Island. Well, this is the only thing I ever did, so there's, there's a lot of things I like about it. Get to work with everybody here, that your family and friends. The people that work, work with us been here for a long time, too. Top cultured oysters are grown close to the water's surface in mesh bags, which gives the oysters enough water to feed on, as the water can still freely flow through them. Each bag can hold two to three hundred oysters. Imperfections in the shells are nicked off when the oysters tumble together. The oysters then have a more uniform look, which provides additional appeal to restaurant buyers. This method of cultivating oysters has seen a huge jump in popularity in the past decade because of its efficiency and it can meet consumer demands. Well, they're just easier to look after when they foul up. You can flip them up to air dry them. It makes it quite a bit easier. Top cultured oysters are ready to be harvested when they are three years old. Yet the work is year round. In the summer months, they first collect the oysters' larvae. Got to catch the spat first. So we put spat collectors out and they dip them in cement, and the larvae is floating in the water, and they just 
when they get to a certain size, they cling on to the cement, break the cement off, and then put them in these Vexar bags. And then it takes about three years after that to get to full size. The Hardies also buy oysters from other fishermen. They store the oysters in the salt water and haul them out whenever they have an order. Coming up on Land and Sea, Malpec oysters continue to be celebrated across the globe. Good morning, Hardies. Yes, I can take your order. Okay, 50 on the 140 standard, 100 on the 33 count standard. Yep, yeah, and that will grow tomorrow by Midland. No problem. Thank you. Prince Edward Island has long been celebrated for its delicious seafood, and many islanders have deep roots in the fishing community here, including Leslie Hardy's family, whose fishing history began in PEI in the mid-1800s. In 1980, Hardy opened Leslie Hardy and Sons. They fish lobster and oysters, but the bulk of their commercial activity rests with their processing and shipping plant. This proud family tradition shows no signs of changing as Hardy's eight adult children also work side by side with their father. They get the hard work all along, so I just oversee it a little bit, see what's going on. While Hardy's sons harvest their own bottom cultured oysters, most of the oysters Hardy sends around the world he buys from local fishermen. The oysters that we're, we're selling today are wild oysters. They come from the, the, the from the fishermen. And it's important to this area that the buyers, like myself, try to look after these fishermen, which supported us over the last 20 or 30 years. Each buyer's got his own amount of fishermen. You try to look after them. If you're good to them, they'll be good to you. You gotta have a good relationship. You can't be hateful, you can't be cranky. You gotta, you know, you, you gotta be nice to people. They're always nice to you. This order emailed in today? Yeah. Just come in? Yeah. Yeah. So it's this, this guy took some the other day, eh? This is twice yes. a week he's taking them, eh? Yeah. In the processing and shipping plant, the oysters are inspected. They are graded according to size, and any remaining clay or silt is washed away. People are eating oysters more than they ever did. And uh, transportation is good, eh? Temperature control. Products get there in a hurry, and when they get there, they're in perfect condition, you know, like, just like when they left the plant. That's a big difference. Back 30 years ago, there was no, uh, no control over the temperature like that. They wouldn't ship oysters into the middle of part of October, way back in the 70s. There was no refrigeration. But the meat in them is perfect. They're nice and fresh. They're still Malpec. And I like eating them, though. They're good. <laughs> Leslie Hardy and Sons ship more than 1,000 boxes of oysters a week. Each box contains 150 oysters. We buy a lot here, eh? We buy a lot. It's one of the biggest, one of the biggest uh, shippers in this area here. We go long distances sometimes, some, some to New York, some to Boston, Montreal, Toronto, Los Angeles, then Calgary, oh, Halifax, and uh, Montreal and Toronto are two big, big ones. They travel. They travel a lot more than I do, <laughs> for sure. As popular demand for oysters continues to resound the world over, oyster growers question whether they can keep up with the market. Yes, it has grown. It's amazing. Every year you wonder where they're going to be the next year because they're fished so hard this year. Where are they going to come next year from? Matt Sullivan is the executive director of the PEI Aquaculture Alliance. Sullivan meets regularly with members like Martin O'Brien, owner of Cascompec Bay Oysters, to address any of their concerns. One concern is making certain the oyster industry grows in a sustainable way and there's not a surge in new oyster leases. Well, there, there's a lot of processes in place before a, a new lease is issued by the federal government, so there's a, a lot of science uh, and modeling around um, you know, to, to make sure that we're at a level that's still safe. The, the thing that would happen before there's too many oysters is that 
uh, there wouldn't be growth. So a lot of the industry does not want more oysters in the water than that's going to uh, hurt the, the growth. With 7,100 leased acres dedicated to oyster production, 580 leaseholders and 20 processing plants on the island, the PEI Aquaculture Alliance also works to keep PEI's natural resources intact. We're doing a, a long-term uh, research project on ocean acidification right now um, and trying to uh, learn about how that's going to impact the industry. And with warmer temperatures, there comes uh, concerns with some uh, uh, different uh, bacteria, things like that. So we try to uh, stay, uh, stay ahead of the curve. PEI wants to sidestep mistakes that other areas have faced. New York City's harbor once brimmed with oysters. The oysters were over-harvested and the harbor is now polluted. A recent initiative, the Billion Oyster Project, is bringing the mighty mollusk back to New York. A billion oysters will be placed into the water and their filtering system is expected to clean toxins out of the harbor. Though these oysters are not for human consumption, Oysters are an environmentally friendly, cost-effective, and efficient way to decontaminate water. Whereas PEI, our benefit is that we have clean water all around us, and uh, we have such a rigorous methodologies for uh, handling our oysters and whatnot, so that uh, basically we can ensure that the food is, is safe, but also quite tasty. Exports of savory oysters from PEI held steady for years at $10 million, but recently it jumped to almost $13 million. That demand, we feel, is going to continuously grow. Uh, it's a great industry for a lot of people to get into. It's overall been great for the economy, for, for rural PEI. Coming up on Land and Sea, creative ways oysters are consumed in rural PEI. It's the story behind it. It's getting to talk to people that really love oysters and getting to share our story and getting to share the product that we produce out here with other people that really enjoy it. The surge in oyster popularity is a big deal for Canada's smallest province. With over 50% of the oysters consumed in North America coming from PEI, the province's oyster business is booming. Jeff Noy and Damien Enman are determined to keep their business independent. They want to harvest, process and ship their own oysters. But without their own processing plant, they can't sell their oysters out of province. The main challenges to this point have, have definitely been the processing side of it and shipping. Uh, to get set up for that has been, a, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of work and a lot of regulations that you have to follow and uh, you know but we're working our way through all those challenges and hurdles and you know we'll, we'll definitely be there shortly. Still not having a processing plant hasn't slowed them down at all. They sell their oysters to local businesses around rural PEI. Businesses like Dylan's Convenience and Pizzeria. In this unassuming diner in Tyne Valley one of the most popular items on the menu are the fried Valley Pearl oysters served with PEI chips. Off a beaten path down a dirt road, Valley Pearl also sells to a microbrewery, Moth Lane Brewing, where you'll find brewmaster Eric Wagner. Wagner became the first person on the island to commercially make beer using oysters as an ingredient. Well, well I made the oyster beer to give this brewery a nail to give it a sense of place because you know not only are we using the water from the area we're using the oysters from the sea i decided to use valley pearl oysters because they have a great quality oyster that uh, lends a very nice flavor to my stout noy and enman have found a way to make valley pearl oysters succeed by providing other rural businesses with their oysters but it's not just the work that's important to them they make sure their families can spend time together as families, as friends. I guess after a long week of uh, working, it's kind of nice to sit down with everybody and, you know, kind of enjoy yourselves a little bit and, you know, just talk and eat these beautiful oysters. I think oysters are about the people, to be honest. I, 
Uh, I love eating them, don't get me wrong, they're delicious and they're, they're amazing, but it's all about that social aspect. It's that connection that you make with people. Well, it, it, it takes on a different aspect when you go yeah. from growing and fishing them your whole life to when you actually get out and shuck and serve people because you see the passion that's involved and then you see people that really just love oysters. Yeah. In Ellerslie PEI, Leslie Hardy gets a visit from his grandson and his great-grandson, demonstrating that as long as there is a demand for oysters, there will be a hardy to fish them. We got the grandchildren involved, and we're having a lot of fun. They're easy to get along with, and uh, you can growl them and don't get too much, too much offended. They 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 come right back tomorrow, and nice as ever. It's it's good. It helped their education. They got a little money saved up for their education. Valley Pearl Oysters recently got the green light to start a processing and shipping plant, which they hope to open in the next year. But the business of oysters aside, there's still nothing better for Noy and Enman than sharing their passion. You know, we, we want to be shucking, serving, eating. You know, we just want to be yeah. oysters all day. Like, that's yeah. what we want to do. I, I know... The plan is to open up a little bit of a bar yeah. in, our, in our plant, just mostly so that we can entertain people and talk oysters with them. Yeah, that's right. We're going to be doing oysters until we're 75 years old. I know it. And, and uh, there's no better way to spend your life, I don't think. Yeah. It's, Talking, eating, shucking oysters is, is the best thing you can do. That's the best office a fellow could hope yeah, for. Yeah, that's right. <laughs>